All right, today we are back to work on the K-Swap Sephiro build. We've been on a bit of a roll with this thing. We are getting extremely close to the finish line on this. We started it last episode after some trials and tribulations. A little small issue, a little small bug in the uh, base tune we had to get that figured out. She fired right up, and that's with the tune not even close. Like, it's it's not even close. The fueling's way off, the timing's locked at zero degrees, yada, yada. So I want to tinker with that more, try to get her running as best we can but we can't really run it long at the moment because we don't have any oil lines running to and from our turbo and that is not good for the turbo this is a nice turbo i don't want to destroy it so the turbo line stuff should be here today we can get that knocked out once we have oil to the turbo we can run it longer tinker with the tune play with it some more among other things we've got to do but since those fittings and lines aren't here yet, what I wanna do is dive into the power steering system. So we've gotta go a kind of a weird route with this car. So I wanna kinda of get that figured out that way when it does come time to drive it, it's one less thing we gotta worry about. So let me give you the game plan of uh, what we're gonna be doing with for power steering in this car. Basically, the factory K-series power steering pump went like all the way up here. Now the problem is with this manifold in a front wheel drive car the K-series came in, would be facing the other way. So imagine this part back here, no problems, right? You're not trying to run intake piping here, but with, with it like this, the power steering pump doesn't fit. So instead of going through the trouble of trying to figure out some way to make my own mount for it, I just decided to do an electric power steering setup. So I decided to go with what I have in this car, which is a Volvo electric pump. You can see it right here. I started out with this in the LS Miata, I had it in the trunk, it didn't work that well. It's kind of inconsistent. It was almost like not having power steering. Like you kind of had power steering sometimes. Like it, it didn't work very well. I assumed it was just the pressure drop from the long lines. I put it in this car, put it in the front here. It's still a reasonably long line because it's got to go all the way over there, but it works really well. About as well as you could expect the electric power steering to work. So since I slacked on the oil lines and stuff, I was like, I don't want to be in the same situation with the power steering pump. I don't want it to come time to oh, I'm ready to do it and I don't have it, now I gotta order it, like I did with the freaking lines, which is why we're not driving this thing right now. So, the other day, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, order a power steering pump right now. So I look online, I found the connector and stuff, but the pumps, they wanted like 180 bucks, 200 bucks shipped for the pumps. Check my local junkyard, what do you know? They had one in stock, way cleaner condition than any of the ones I found on eBay, and it was 50 bucks, <laughs> 50 freaking bucks. So, and I got the whole bracket and everything. Now I did order brand new connectors so we can pin our own wires and not have to butt connector this stuff, but we have the connectors just in case. So that's pretty exciting. I'm, I'm really stoked on getting that thing for 50 bucks after seeing what they went for on eBay. And like, they were way crustier ones. Like they looked like they were in a car that got rusted out and <sighs> jibber jabbering. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. So what we need to do is work on mounting it. I left this area right here specifically for mounting that power steering pump. That's why this is open. That's why I put the battery over here. I played around with the idea of putting the battery over here and it didn't look like it was gonna fit with the pump. So we've got this whole area open for our power steering pump. We just need to mount it. Now there is one slight dilemma that I figured was gonna be a problem. So the pump is too tall for this spot. As you can see, that's gonna be above the hood line. If it was further back, it wouldn't, but to fit it where we need to fit it, it's gonna be above it. But I have a solution. So you can probably see it better on this side. The motor hangs down a good three, four inches past the base here. So my plan is remove this stock bracket entirely, cut a hole for that to drop down in, and then that should get us where we need it. So I guess let's start with removing the bracket off this. Got a plan of how to mount it but we're gonna need to try to retain these rubber isolators with our plan. So there's already a hole here where the intercooler piping used to go through, but now our intercooler is V-mounted, so it only goes right there. Instead of all the way down, around, up. Uh, but anyway, I'm hoping I can just open that hole up, just slide it through there. So I don't have to cut more holes in this thing. We got another hole over here too. I mean, would that be a better place for it? I definitely think that's gonna be low enough, but oh yeah, it's for sure gonna be low enough. We need to determine how the heck we wanna mount this. I'm thinking some sort of stud 
with a washer that the, where did my rubber grommets all go? They probably all fell off, yep. <laughs> They're in that grinding procedure. It's so basically something for the washer to sit on and then a stud from there up. I'm gonna start uh, cracking on trying to figure that out. It's like the dirtiest steel I've ever worked with. All right, well, this is kind of funny. So the measurement we need is about right at two and a half inches to get this just off sitting on the bottom so it'll be isolated, right? So I'm looking at this bracket. I was just like staring off into space at it for a second and I was like, man, what do you know? Two and a half inches, it's literally perfect. So I'm gonna unbolt this part of the bracket from this part of the bracket and uh, see if we can make that work, save ourselves some time and make it all bolt in instead of welding it in. That way in case we ever wanna change it later, we can and we're not committed with something welded into the car. All right, well, it took modifying the bracket a bit, clearancing there, clearancing there, cutting the lower tabs off, but we've got it fitting. So now all I gotta do is drill some holes and bolt it in from the bottom. Look at that, mounted, free floating, sick. All right, I got the pump in. I've got this fitting in. We actually need steel fittings for the Earl's power steering line, but I just, I have this fitting for something else. I wanted to make sure this was the right thread because I made a bit of an educated guess on it. Uh, but I'm really happy with that. The hole's big enough to where it can move around and be isolated so it doesn't vibrate itself to death. I believe the hood should clear. We'll have to verify that. It's gonna be a little tight. Worst case, we can cut the bottom of this off and basically plastic weld this lower and drop this cap down, but I don't think it's gonna look very pretty. So I'd prefer to avoid that, but we don't need this long filler neck. This is like this for the car it was in, the Volvo that it came in. It's like under here behind the headlight. It is the silliest thing. You have to pull the headlight out to fill your power steering fluid. Kinda odd, but anyway, more on that later. We're still waiting on some fittings and lines. I know, theme of the end of the build with this car, but that's just the way things are right now. It is very hard to get parts. Parts are back ordered. Shipping gets delayed, it's it's a bit of a mess, and I slacked on ordering the stuff, so it's, it's, it's on me. If I had ordered it a month ago, it'd be here and we wouldn't have to worry about it. But anyway, the bulk of the power steering is done. All we gotta do from here is the line, so I wanna move on to the turbo oil feed line because we got our fittings here. So this is our fitting to go in where our factory oil pressure switch is. So that's where we're gonna be tapping off of. Now this was a hard fitting to get because instead of being eight NPT, national pipe thread, it's eight BSPT, British standard pipe thread. So uh, there's not a lot of companies that make that fitting, but I managed to find one. We got it so we can get that in and start doing our routing to our oil pressure sensor, the turbo, etc. All right, so I forgot that I'm still waiting on a few more things for this. That ordered from a different company. They were supposed to be here today, but the shipping got updated. It's not gonna be here till tomorrow. Basically, the plan here is we'll run off of the line to this T. One hose will go up and into the turbo. One hose will split off and go to the oil pressure sensor. Now we need mostly all short lines to do this. Kind of an odd line size to find, but I was able to make this work for now. So it's just a straight to straight, but it's long enough to loop into the turbo. So worst case, we could make that work. We shouldn't need to use this because we're still waiting on the fitting to go in the oil pan to build our drain line to, which is coming with the other lines. So if we don't have that, we can't really do anything with the feed line. So 
Uh, I just figured I'd put it here just to kind of keep this oil port closed off so we're not just leaving it open. Um, and worst case, if push came to shove with the other lines, we could make this work. So as I, I feared it would come down to in this build, lines and fittings are going to be our biggest dilemma and are our biggest dilemma. As you know, you order everything you think you need and then you realize you're missing this one adapter fitting and that derails the whole plan. You can't do anything without, I mean, I have tons of universal and stuff to build that line down to the pan. I just don't have the half inch MPT to AN to go there. Oh my God, I do. Dude, 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 where is it? Dude, dude, ah! I forgot I ordered an extra one of these. We have it, we have it. Oh my God, okay, well, shoot, this changes the whole dynamic then. Now it's great that this line will work because we can do with the other lines later and put the oil pressure sensor in with the T and stuff, but we can feed oil to the turbo now once we build that line. So we need to get this in and uh, start building this freaking drain line. Oh, dude, I am so stoked. I am so happy right now. I thought we were gonna have to wait. I was gonna start working on something else, but uh, uh, the, the quick chirper jabber, I'm gonna get this fitting in because I am stoked. Also got this sweet 10 a.m. Earl's cap. Just got these for capping stuff off, so that way nothing can fall in there while we're building out our line. I am so excited about this, guys. All right, I'm not sure if we're gonna need a 45 or not. I guess that would probably work. These lines are gonna be a little different when we do the actual oil filter housing. So I might put myself right in the path of the new lines when that time comes. Oh yeah, we're definitely gonna want a 45 out of that. Otherwise we have to run right by the header. So we'll probably have that 45 and then kind of curve up and then 45 in. 45 over and go straight in maybe I don't know I'm gonna play around with this and try to make a decision on what fittings to use all right so I've decided 45 on both ends that'll allow us to arc it away from the exhaust aesthetically I guess not the nicest thing like a straighter shot but it, it's gonna go right by the turbo manifold if we do that so we've got the room to play with we might as well arc it some and keep it away from danger. So we've got Mr. Gasket Co. lines, Mr. Gasket Co. fittings, and then we've got some Earl's heat sleeve and this, I didn't even know existed. So this is Earl's uh, line assembly lube to make putting, because you have to use some lube to put these together. So uh, how I like to make my lines, uh, everyone's different. I put the first end on, route it roughly where it needs to go, and then mark it and cut it. Just that way, I'm confident in where it's going to go because something like this that has an arc if i try to measure between the two fittings it's not going to really account for all the variances so i like to do it this way Ooh, a little heavy-handed on that oh wow that works wonders Oh man, how am I just learning that this existed? I just saw it when I was ordering the fittings. I was like, that might be handy. What do you know? Gotta clean my soft jaws off here. No point in a soft jaw if it's got a bunch of metal dust on it that's gonna scratch your fittings up anyway. And we've got our Earl's and wrench for good measure. These are, there's a, it's a set with this one and a little bit smaller one. Oh, this is like in the way now. Um, they are my favorite and wrenches. They're just solid billet aluminum. They just feel so nice. There we go. All right, one end on. Now we'll install the line. Oh, I scratched it. We'll install the line back in. Try to figure out our next one. The only thing that sucks about doing it this way is you've got to route 20 feet or however long your line is that you ordered all the way through, which this is a pretty straight shot, but I'm gonna go ahead and lift the car up so we can kind of shove it all under the car. <laughs> We 
got our wine marked. I'm gonna gone a little overboard with how much wine I ordered. I'm so used to doing fuel wines in AN where you gotta run from the front to the back, back to the back, back to the back to the back. Long runs. Oil wines, not such long runs. But it never hurts to have extra. Definitely glad I finally have an AN wine cutter. Even though this isn't running by high temperature areas, still want to sleeve it. Well, I mean, it kind of is, but with the fitting angle, we got it away from worrying too much about heat, but better safe than sorry. All right, easy enough, completed one. We can get it back in easily. I usually have a habit of making lines too long. But not this time. Actually made this one the right length to do what I need it to do. All right, that worked out. That line is like the exact size we needed. Stays as far away from the uh, turbo manifold as possible. Shouldn't have any interference with these lines either. Uh, once we make them because they're going to kind of 45 this way and go through this hole here Well, I don't really know exactly where I'm going to mount my remote filter housing If you didn't see the last episode, this is a temporary one I stole off my FC to uh, get us up and running because the one that I've got for this car um, Hasn't got here yet So we just temporarily pumped it to this one so that we could fill it with oil and run it just to, if you didn't know now you know so that's done I'm gonna get hooked up. Uh, I need to set my base pressure because we were just playing with that all over the place when we were trying to crank it and having issues and then fix some of the fueling in the tune change a couple other things and we're going to start it up let it run for a minute see how it does oh this is exciting i'm still going to be like feel like i need to shut it off immediately but we're good we're good we should be good all, all we're missing right now is coolant all right so the first thing we need to do now that we can run it for more than a few seconds is check timing because basically during our whole debacle it turned out that the timing offset was incorrect on our base map for this engine so we got it set correctly based on reading the timing under cranking but ideally we want to read that timing with the engine running so we're going to do that real quick this is very hard to do i have to tape this plug wire in here quick before we unlock the timing it should run better with the timing not locked at zero as well all right let's fire her off I'm going to put you guys at the back so you can see what it sounds like because I haven't even heard what it sounds like yet. I need to give it a little throttle. We're a tiny bit off. actually set now so we can change it from zero degrees locked at zero to dynamic timing but for a car with a tune that is off another car and realistically probably not that close she runs good all right I'm just gonna loosen this line real quick make sure we're getting oil up here yep all right, that's all squared away. So now I'm gonna change the timing, unlock it off zero. It's basically, if you're unfamiliar with tuning, the timing changes throughout the map, just like your fuel does, you know, how much fuel the injectors are delivering. There's a timing map. And we basically locked it at zero, so no matter what, it's zero timing. So now we're gonna change it to dynamic timing, and we'll see what happens. There's a lot of hand gestures, I'm sorry. This is nerve wracking. It's always scary running a car for the first time, especially with like no coolant in it and stuff. You're just like, you feel like you're under a timetable. Feel like someone's got a buzzer beeping at you. Come on, hurry up, hurry up. You know, it's really not that big of a deal. The worst thing that's happening is the water pump isn't being lubricated. 
but it can take a while for the engine to get too hot. I also want to test and make sure the clutch is all working, try to put it in gear and let the clutch in and out. That's a success. Well, I think it's safe to say we're probably not gonna need that silencer for the exhaust. This thing's honestly pretty quiet. I still need to have someone rev it while I stand at the back so I can hear it revving because obviously I can't hear the exhaust because I'm towards the inside of the car. But anyway, I am super stoked. It is running so solid now for not really tinkering with the tune at all. I just can't believe how good it runs. I do think we need to adjust the valve lash, uh, but we'll need to run it get it up to operating temp and then adjust the valve lash. At least that's how you do it on diesels and stuff. So conveniently some other parts are here. They literally just showed up. The rest of our oil line stuff for our turbo feed. So we've got our adapter fitting for our pressure sensor, the lines. Now I wish I had two of these short lines, but I got a plan to make the longer one work. But anyway, we have everything we need to finish this out and wire up our pressure sensor. And then we can see what our oil pressure is in the new engine because currently we have no idea. We know it's moving oil, but could be 10 PSI, could be 80. Don't know. So I want to get that done now. Kind of antsy to uh, find out. So let's try to figure out how we're going to route and place everything. I have no idea why I didn't grab the electric ratchet for this one. All right, so we've got our oil pressure sensor mounted here with a B-clamp, simple enough. Um, so currently this line is essentially going straight off and you can see uh, it's a little close to the manifold, especially if it flopped. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the longer line since I don't have any short lines, any extra short lines, down and up to the T. That way it kind of loops under those other hoses and keeps it out of harm's way. That's my plan, at least. All right, well, I need a short line with a 90 on it for the oil pressure sensor. As you can see, we had to loop this one, which is not the uh, most aesthetically pleasing thing. Um, we'll need to clamp these lines and such, you know, something like that when the time comes. Um, but that, that line's definitely gonna be temporary. We need a much shorter line than that. But everything is tight and that'll do the job for now. So now we gotta wire up the sensor. All right, we got that connected, kind of tied these wires together. This goes over to the boost control solenoid. So now we just need to go on the laptop, program the sensor, set the calibration so we have an accurate reading because basically a sensor reads, speaking in generalities here, but a sensor like this, it gets five volts and ground. Then it has a signal wire out to the ECU. So basically the sensor reads zero to five volts. So depending on the pressure, it'll send a signal back to the ECU saying somewhere between really it's like 0.5 and four and a half volts. So what we need to do is tell the ECU what 0.5 volts is and what 4.5 volts is. If it was a 300 PSI sensor, 4.5 volts would be 300 PSI. If it's a 100 PSI sensor, 4.5 volts would be 100 PSI. 
So anyway, I'm gonna go do that real quick. We've got our oil pressure sensor set. It says one PSI, so let's change this a little bit. Uh, 0.53, cause that's what it's reading right now, which should be nothing. Uh, it seems to be about as close to zero as we're gonna get. I don't want it to go negative. All right, prime it. like a kitten all right but sweet we got good oil pressure i just wanted to make sure you know i didn't know if it was going to be like 10 psi or 70. pretty smooth though all right well i need to mess with some other settings i need to set my fan fan output up oh there are you fan control the Haltech software here is really freaking nice and easy to work with. I gotta give them that. Do I even have fan out set up? It should be set up somewhere in here. Thermo fan, that's why. It's a digital switch, DPO, active state low. Let's just make sure it works. Enable above 60 degrees. Disable below 55. Disable when engine stopped. Cool, that's nice. Okay, let's see. Oh, we got no fans. I've got to dig further to figure out what's up with the fans, but I did get my uh, alternator working, which I'm pretty excited about because it was a total shot in the dark on what wires we needed to use and how we needed to trigger it. So this is 12 volts, it's getting 12 volts, but then what the trigger was, which is an active high, um, and it works. It's charging at 13.6 volts. So, and we could change the pulsate to charge more or less, but anyway, I need to pot these two here um, just to seal them up from the weather, but I wanted to get it working first and make sure that my guesstimation of the pins we would need and how we would need to operate them was correct. And it was, which is sick. The simplest thing that should work is the fans. I don't know why it's not working. I mean, I can check it here real quick. Um, basically, it needs to be sending ground signal into this, which should then turn our fans on here. This is our MSD solid state relay. So we'll check it real quick, but I'm pretty sure that, I mean, it worked when I first wired it up, but let's see. Okay, well, we got an issue here, somehow. All right, fan investigative work. <laughs> First, I thought the MSD must have been bad because I tried to trigger it myself on both the power and ground side because you can trigger these outputs with either power or ground, depending on which rail you screw it into. And it didn't work, the fans didn't come on. So I replaced it, pulled this one out, put that one in, nothing. I'm like, what? Well, turns out the fan wires got unplugged when the oil filter slid down here and tugged on them. So that was that, plugged the fans in, and then they wanted to run all the time. I was like, what, excuse me? Well, the digitally pulsed output that I'm using to turn the fans on has ground at key off. My MSD solid state relay is essentially, in a sense, powered all the time. So when it goes to ground, it then turns the fans on with the key off. So anyway, moral of the story is I gotta figure out a way to interrupt this ground when the key's off and turn it back on when the key's on. Just trying to find an elegant solution for that, which realistically, I'd wanna do that anyway. I wouldn't want this thing to have power all the time. But yeah, so that explains that. So we're gonna have to figure that out for now. We're just gonna leave it unplugged. Really happy we've got the base sorted. The engine's running way better. We are so close. We are just some more lines and fittings away from driving this thing. Oh, it's killing me. It's killing me, but we're gonna get it done. We're gonna get it done. But basically as of right now, we're kind of out of things to do. So I guess I'm gonna go ahead and into here and we'll pick this back up later. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Hope to see you guys next time. Goodbye.